do this shit until they murder me. Hello everyone, welcome back to another World of Tanks Godzilla video. My name is Zeno Zatch, and today's video is about Update 4.4's Spoils of War Summary. Now this is a detailed breakdown of the uh, Spoils of War Update 4.4 that was released on April 3rd, and that we will go over all the smaller details that they don't include in the broad release on the uh, forums. Or not the forums, but the article uh, for it. So this will be a lot longer than the traditional videos that I do. However, considering most of my tanks average around my my videos average around 35 to 40 minutes, um, this will try not to drag it out too far. So without further ado, we're going to skip through a couple of these um, because we have gone over them topics for different videos. So new features, war stories, spoils of war, the base capture redesign, common crew portraits, defense towers, um, have already been talked about in previous videos, so I'm not going to bring them up here. Uh, War Stories capture select uh, chapter select flow has been redesigned. The map the main change is that players now select their tank before selecting a chapter when replaying a War Stories campaign or when in challenge mode. So simply put, you when you first select a chapter, your first run through of the of the game mode or of that chapter of War Stories, you have to run with the tank that the War Story um, is talking about however when you decide on replaying that game mode or going through the challenge mode you can now select your tank then select the chapter of war story that you want to play maps have now a map that has been recently introduced that we've gone over this is prokhorovka winter the winter variant of prokhorovka where the rivers and ponds have frozen over during winter months providing more usable routes now i've already given my opinion on this with the release article and i'm not going to talk too much about this here so we're going to go over some improvements that have been introduced along with update 4.4. Um, the first one being War Stories Brothers in Armor. Uh, the adjusted the effectiveness of allied bot during the initial set of enemies to give the player more time to engage. The enemy SPGs now continue to engage your allies until they have been destroyed. So they will completely uh, keep firing, reloading and firing your, at your allies until you take them out on the battlefield or if for some reason uh, you don't your bots or allied bots end up doing that for you double assault game mode audio support each base now has their own alarm sound so players can distinguish which base is being captured by the alarm um, I have not seen the double assault game mode actually in game uh, over the week that I during the course of this week that I played however I'm interested to see if anyone actually has uh, if you've managed to play the game mode please let me know down in the comments and how it actually played out for you guys um, I know the game mode because I've seen a couple of the videos from some of the PC players however on console I've yet to actually play that I've played the standard assault mode uh, which is either one team defends one team captures but double assault takes a whole new spin on that with there being two flags and each team can control either one or two flags and defending defending that sort of stuff um, or defending your your respective flag and trying to capture the other one um, but that's for a different topic in general uh, adjusted the op requirements for war stories mission guerrilla tactics players now need to damage three enemies while undetected repeatable daily once now it's interesting to note that they're actually putting repeatable once daily um, because i didn't even know that you could repeat some of those ops daily um, so i'm actually going to have to go look through each of the war story uh, ops to see which ones you can select and and repeat daily to see because i know some of them reward reward you with some some um interesting rewards whether that be silver some i'm pretty sure one of them gave me consumables and a few of them did they give you uh experience but that's normally to upgrade the tank so um oh no not bad i want i really would look forward to seeing this and how it plays out uh ranked battles personal contributions will only display uh if it's not zero points so I know this has popped up before because I've jumped into a, I've gone into the ranked battle tabs when I've gone home on a Sunday and I figured I could still play however the at that point by the time I normally get home the um, the ranked battles pretty much ended and although I didn't get to compete it would still just like um, pop up telling me I got a zero uh, or 
I think one of them I did get one point, which is really odd. Or a hundred, I think it was a hundred. Um, but it actually tells me I got a zero, but it's I just go in there to see how well my friends did over the weekends and see how high they score in ranked battles because I know sometimes they do compete in that. Um, so that's, that's I guess, uh, an overall improvement to it. Uh, the Legend buttons now have a new black outline. I'm not sure what that's referring to. Uh, maybe someone can point that out to me in the comments down below. Added a platoon leader change notifications. So if you guys didn't know, you can actually, after you selected a tank, you can actually go over one of your uh, platoon mates and promote them to the uh, platoon leader. Now this will be a little bit better because you can't just have fun with random people and just be like, well, now you're the leader and they don't know. Uh, a notification should chime in and let you know um, that, Someone has been selected as the new platoon leader, and it should adjust around. Uh, added the German flag as an available flag emblem and flag attachments. Now, I haven't actually taken advantage of the custom flags um, uh, uh, customization. Um, however, I did notice that they don't have my nationality. Uh, I come from Belize originally, and they don't have that flag, so I ended up going. I did. I know I have created one customizable flag with an emblem, um, I believe that's on the TVP, and I did put the Soviet one on the KV-2, so, um, not sure how many people are requesting it, but considering they add it, have it now, well, then congratulations to you guys and have fun. Uh, spectator mode for team training improvements, dead players' names are now more transparent, and uh, living players now are prioritized over dead players' names, so not sure what that's referring to there um dead players names are now more transparent i guess this is like while you're in battle you can now when you're normally swinging over you would just see the um person's name of their tank pop up over the tank i guess it's going to be able to be a little bit more undetectable which should help some players while they're doing that because most of the time in team training it's normally where people host the com competitions at so it's a little bit I guess that'll help the competitive players out more. Uh, improve the loading times in the garage. Now this one I do know that sometimes when you're selecting tanks, um, it does take a while, or even after you do a customization to a tank, it takes a while for the tank to load back in, so I hope that's what they're referring to for this, and not just the, um, the tabbing over to a different tab in the garage. Uh, decrease the volume of the intro cinematics, which I am very thankful I've had to actually taken off my headset a couple times uh, when I'm just starting up the game to be able to press A before I even get the chance. Uh, sometimes that thing just shocks me out of nowhere because I forget that it's there every thought every time you load in. They should create an option for that to be able to not have the cinematic play. Uh, in the settings, they really should, because I don't like the fact that every time I start up the game, that's what plays. I know you guys love your war stories, but there should at least be an option. <laughs> uh, and decrease the volume, oh, nope, read that part. Team full Ridge, Team Destruction added an additional spawn location for both teams to improve the balance. It's a great improvement there. Post and Standard Battle adjusted the spawn locations to be located more north and south. And um, Siegfried Line, Team Destruction, added additional spawn location for both teams to improve balance. Now, although they say to improve balance, I'd really like whenever they do update summaries like this, um, that they do change the positions of the spawn locations to actually include images of where they did the spawn relocations to. This way, whenever, you know, people like myself that are going through the update summary um, are looking at this we can actually see the physical change on the map to what it was previously um whether you guys do that later on in your updates hopefully that's something wargaming itself can look at uh to improve some of this so that players actually can see that not just feel like okay i'm in the game but i don't really see the difference um that's probably something to help improve that so additional changes um and i know this probably stirred a lot of people up um made a little bit of frenzy in the live stream earlier additional changes map removed temporarily due to update size limitations there will be rotated back in at a later date so the size limitation for wallet hangs console is 50 gigs um so 
they cannot pass that. They can come close, but they cannot pass that 50 gig limit um, due to Microsoft and Sony's restrictions on that. So, Redshire 1944, Northwest, Windstorm, Tundra, and Tundra Winter have been rotated out. And Jeff Gregg talked about this in their uh, developer live stream on Tuesday, April, April 3rd. Um, they basically said that it should come back within a month is what they're planned to. So that would be in the month of May. Um, so look forward to that in the month of May of seeing those tanks back in rotation along with uh, a few others. Maybe they could rotate some new ones in and rotate some of the older ones out. The King Dragon Type 59 has been buffed. Inspired by the Type 59-2, a Type 59 that was upgunned to the well-known British 105 L7A1, the King Dragon has received a similar treatment to add some extra fire to its breath. The King Dragon's gun has received an upgrade to the modified version of the 105 L7A1, more notably the 105mm L7C. Packing a devastating 390 average damage, not only that, but we've buffed additional gun stats, giving it better penetration and accuracy, making it a truly fearsome beast on the battlefield. So the gun has been upgraded, but will visually remain the same to preserve the King Dragon look. So basically the barrel was supposed to be bigger, but because they basically just took a Type 59G and brought it onto console and it already had that visual aspect, um, they just changed the paint on it. They basically, to avoid having to create a brand new model for that turret and changing stuff around which would take up more data, they kept it the same, just changed the name and stats of that gun. So the new gun has better DPM of 1747.5, higher penetration with 200 on its standard rounds, 250 on its uh, premium rounds, and 53 on its HE rounds, higher damage with 390 on its uh, uh, standard, 390 on its uh, premium, and 480 on its HE penetration. So, interestingly enough, something that doesn't state for these is that the 105 is actually an APCR round. And I believe the 105 that they're referring to is kind of similarly to what the Charioteer gets when it's fully upgraded. Its standard round is APCR, its premium round is Heat, and the HE round is just HG. I don't remember the exact number for exact name for it, but it's just a standard HE rounds. Um, so APCR will be a lot better for shell velocity, um, and that's what's going to help you with the better gun stats to begin with, and giving it better penetration overall is a great change for it, because that was one of the things I kind of brought up in my tank review for it, is that I don't like the fact that when you have an, a tier 8 tank that doesn't get preferential matchmaking, and it has less than 200 millimeters of penetration, really feels underwhelming when you get into your bottom tier matchmaking, uh, going against tier 9s and 10s more often. And unfortunately for the King Dragon, it doesn't get that uh, preferential like the standard Type 59, so it had less DPM with better gun stats, just didn't stack up well when going into higher tiers. Um, the reload time has been uh, has been up to 13.18 seconds, uh, with that being that you can only have a 4.55 rate of fire as well. So, although it has a higher DPM, keep in mind that the reload and rate of fire are uh, su sufficiently changed around since it now packs a bigger gun. Uh, the 100 on it was very dependable for the Type 59, however the aim time on it was semi-decent. For the King Dragon, the, the aim time was great uh, compared to the standard Type 59, but again, the DPM was sufficiently lower, so now the new gun has a higher DPM than both tanks is a lot more interesting. Aim time is 2.3 and accuracy is 0.36. Now, I will go over the King Dragon Type 59 in a revision of the tank review I've done previously as soon as I manage to get some gameplay of the King Dragon again with its new gun, the 105. I'll be able to release that video onto YouTube for you guys to be able to check out and see if it's a tank that you might be interested in the next time around as well as my personal thoughts on it uh, towards the end of that video. Players who currently own the King Dragon Type 59 uh, will be upgraded, the tank will be upgraded to the newer version. The silver will be refunded on all ammunition for the old gun. The new gun 
comes fully loaded with 50 rounds of standard ammunition. The new gun comes with 50 rounds of premium ammo in the depot. So, although it says it comes with 50 rounds of ammunition, keep in mind that when I checked it out, because I did manage to get in and uh, adjust my rounds back, um, it comes with 30 rounds of AP loaded and 20 rounds of HE loaded. So because the gun is bigger, I don't mind using those extra HE rounds. So because I have a little bit more of adjustment, I basically keep 30 rounds of AP, uh, APCR, 15 rounds of heat, and 5 rounds of HE, just because that seems like a pretty decent loadout to begin with. Um, I'm interested to see how this tank plays out when I actually get my hands on uh, on the controller and be able to take it out on the battlefield more and I'll give you guys again look forward to that video and the revision to the King Dragon Type 59's uh, tank review. So we've adjusted the battle tiers for when map uh, for when maps and game modes become available to improve the new player experience. Maps and game modes will now be introduced more slowly with all maps becoming available at battle tier 7. This gives players more time to focus on learning when the vehicles the vehicles and less time trying to learn an enlarged number of maps. Please remember that battle tiers are different than tank tiers. So the game mode standard battle tier is 1 plus encounter, battle tier is 2 plus, team destruction is battle tier 4 plus, assault battle tier 5 plus, extreme weather variance is battle tier 10 plus, so tier 9s and above. Um, maps variants have the same battle tier. So tier 1s will tier one two three i know this had come up before battle tier 11 um it's interesting that they didn't include this but that was because people were thinking that tier 11 tanks were in the game um that's not the case a, a battle tier 11 if you ever see it is strictly talking about the uh an all tier 10 game so if you ever see battle tier 11 be more aware that you can have a game where you're strictly playing tier 10s, um, which rarely happens nowadays, but uh, it is possible. Um, you can see that for anyone that plays basically tier 6 and higher, you will pretty much see Karelia, Overload, Miravenka, Ardenis, Erlenberg, Siegfried Line, Kassarin Pass, Teepful Ridge, Dukla Pass, Khan, Sand River, Scorpion Pass, Steeps, Hilbron, Highway, Rasenai, and... Uh, Naman, Namanhan Winter, so anything above tier 6, those are the maps that you will pretty much see, so battle tier 6 would be tier 5 and above, I apologize. Um, province and mines are pretty much limited to up to tier 3s and 4s, nope, all tiers can see that. You have battle tier 2 can see province, mines, Pimmelsdorf, Ensk, and L Liber Liberty Falls, Battle Tier 3s can see those along with Comer and Wide Park, Ghost Town. Battle Tier 4 will see those along with Prokhorovka, Runeberg, Cliff, Abbey, Pacific Island, Earfield, Mountain Pass, and Severgorsk. Battle Tier 5 will see those along with Malinovka, Lakeville, Westfield, El Halouf, and Ports. Battle Tier 6 and above, Swamp, Fjord, Fisherman's Bay, Arctic Region, South Coast, Live Oaks, Ravage Capital, and Redshire, and Pilsen. Battle Tier 7, 8, and 9. The only maps you guys won't be seeing is... Province is pretty much locked out to anyone Tier 4 and above, or Tier 3 and above. Because it's mostly a Tier 1 and 2 map. Mines and Himmelsdorf... Mine sees every tier. Himmelsdorf sees a everything tier two and above. Ent sees anything tier twos and above. Liberty Falls is anything tier two to tier six. Um, along with Comerine and White Park will only see up to tier six. Ghost Town is tier two to tier ten. Pokorovka is tier three to ten. Runeberg, Cliff, and Runeberg, Cliff, and Abbey will see tier three to ten. Uh, Pacific Island is only between tier three to tier seven. Airfield, Mountain Pass, Severgorsk is tier three to ten. Malinovka, Lakeville, Westfield, El Halouf, Port, Snowport, El Halouf will see tier four to ten. 
port is tier 4 to tier 7. Man, this is hard. I apologize if I'm repeating myself. I'm just making sure I'm getting this right. You have swamps, fjords, fisherman's bay, arctic regions, south coast, live oaks, ravage capital, redshire, and pilsen that we'll see tier 5 to 10s. Corellia, Overlord, Miravenka, Ardennes, Erlenberg, Siegfried Line, Cassini Pass, Tiefel Ridge, Okla Pass, Khan, Sand River, Scorpion Pass, Steps, or Steeps, Heilbronn, Highway, Rizani, and Norman Hun Winter will see tier 6 and above. Um, so if that's if you're wondering why you always see those maps uh, between tier 6 to tier 10, that's because that's the maps that are pretty much located the battle tiers. And it's actually good that they're actually giving this. I'm thinking about saving that image. And we're just going to put that over there. Apologies if I'm doing this in the middle of the video because I want to be able to come back to this. Um, battle tiers in update 4.4. I'll just mark this as map battle tiers. Apologies again, I'm doing this mid, but I'd rather save this for later on. Um, to be able to come back and revisit this at discussions. And just have it for discussions to begin with. So, moving on, we're going to be going into bug fixes. We have... The general uh, bug fixes, which was armor depth and armor thickness numbers now correctly match the armor details. Um, I'm hoping this is referring to the actual armor thickness that the armor has for that specific tank is what's displayed on the in the uh, color variant because that's the problem I have with it. Currently, you just have a general armor thickness, 91 to uh, 120 um, and it just doesn't tell you where that tank lands specifically in that bracket so it just tells you that's the color it's associated with uh, remove stray black and gray pixels from various screens I haven't really seen that but arabic text no longer overlaps with pop-up messages and radio commands ranked battles players can now correctly see friends who are ranked in the latter tab i'm very thankful for that. I always want to people give give people shout outs when I see them uh, progress really well in ranked battles. Elite celebration for the T1 10 E3 no longer occurs when making a worse making a WS tank elite. A war stories tank elite. I guess when you when you fully upgraded some of the war story tanks, a T1 10 E3 would show for it instead of that not sure what that's referring to xbox 360 press the right trigger text in the garage help screen no longer overlaps with other elements rank battles rank text no longer overlaps with the medals at the end of the season celebration screen only the currently logged in controllers can skip the logo and movie when launching the game i'm i'm assuming that some people who had multiple controllers connected could just tap a on any controller and it would skip through War Stories Runaway Tiger Chapter 1, Fix Floating Rock Pile on E1. Uh, War Stories Runaway Tiger Chapter 1, Green Objective Ring is no longer visible at the final point. Uh, Xbox One X, Fixed Text Shadow Effect on Tank Names. Uh, fixed Image Alignment for Rewards Received from a War Chest. I wish they would tell us the, the RNG from War Chests. Added Missing Nation Flags, Flags of Canada. Peoples of Republic of China, Flags of Chicago. Gadsden flag and the first Canadian armor brigade uh, added missing emblems for custom flags armed forces late armed forces early first armored division second motorized division second tank division uh, first motorized division third tank battalion third tank division your car horned helm emblem of the Canadian Canadian armed forces Smolensk, Skaraborg Regiment, the Swedish Army, Skansa Dragoon Regiment, uh, Norbutton Armored Battalion, Swedish Militia, and Swedish Small Coat of Arms. Uh, those are the missing emblems for the custom flags that have been added. Remove duplicate emblems, flag of Dominican Republic and flag of Puerto Rico. I had noticed that, but I thought when I checked, I believe someone reported the bug already. Uh, fix numerous map names, translations, capitalizations, and punctuation in various languages to be consistent throughout the game. Uh, whew, take a breather for that one. Distant markers in PvE not correctly stay in place for the whole mission. 
Uh, battle log now remains if the user is disconnected during that match. That's good because I hate when you disconnect during that match or during a match um, and you try to log back in and you have no way of being able to check the results for that match specifically. Although I wish they would do this um, for their updates because I've had multiple times where I'm trying to get the final game in before the update on Tuesdays and I have enough time to be able to clear the update and get to the um, battle screen results and just not have to worry about going into another game but being able to record the results because I've had that multiple times where I've gotten great results just not the last battle screen results um, page and I wish they would add that um, however if they manage to do the battle log and keep it because we've been kicked off and disconnected uh, for for their updates. I hope that's what it's referring to. I really do. Um, players can now correctly watch a replay from a battle that took place on a different server. Um, I didn't know this was actually... Hmm. I guess that's also to help with the battle log now remains when the user disconnects from that... from the... Um, from the match. Oh, I guess that's during a match, not... How do you watch a match from a different server? Because to do a different server, you would have to do a restart, which would disconnect you. That's, that's a, that, that should have been more specified. It really should have been. Uh, privacy setting is now correctly centered in Japanese. Platoon privacy is no longer trin truncated in several languages. Uh, Russian, French, German, Portuguese, Japanese, Polish, Turkish, Brazilian, and Brazilian Portuguese. Uh, capture bar and encounter now correctly resets when captured tank is damaged. Uh, I know there's been a few issues where, although it captured, you were able to interrupt at the last second and it should reset, but it doesn't. Um, I know that happens too with standard, um, standard mode, so I don't know if they address that as well. Um... The winter trees now correctly drop winter leaves when knocked over. Challenge mode stamp in war stories is now correctly placed in all locations. The replay control panel now correctly opens on the pause option. Um, Xbox tournaments. Players who were on the wrong server are now taken directly to the tournament garage. Um, that's a good improvement. Ranked battles. Text is no longer cut off on the ladder tab when you are unranked. Xbox 360, accepting a platoon invite while in team training now correctly works. Uh, PG encounter battle, fix the bot pathing to prevent them from getting stuck. I'm not sure what that one's referring to. Uh, spectated player highlight no longer displays the team composition bar unless the post-mortem view. Garage now displays the correct tank when purchasing multiple tanks and more stories. Um, map now, map name now correctly displays at the start of the match. War Stories tanks now have an elite celebration. Um, uh, modules no longer display discount tags. Tank emblems, inscriptions, and marks of excellence no longer disappear. Uh, days of remaining rank battles now, uh, no longer displayed before battle starts. That's good. So we got some improvements to some tanks as well. The T7... T-71E2 gun no longer clips into Fender in the sniper view. SDT-14 camouflage now correctly applies to the turret. The Banshee Comet 360 uh, barrel no longer clips into the back of the tank. The Banshee Comet adjusted flag locations to match on all consoles. The 60GFT fix visuals on the suspension to have appropriate holes. 60GFT sniper view no longer clips into the hole. 60GFT fix packages name fix package names. The M3GFT fix visuals on the suspensions to have appropriate holes. The M3 M3GFT camo is no longer applied to tools and headlights. Um, that would have been interesting. The T342 GFT fixed the visuals of the suspension, suspensions to appropriate holes. T342 GFT fire FX now correctly placed. T342 GFT fixed wobbly wheel. T342 GFT added missing teeth on the treads. Primo Victoria canvas cover on the mantle is now HD. That's good. Hummel final package now has 360 view range. That's very good. The WZ120 fixed cupola placement on turrets. The HMH Chrysler K fixed smoothing around the bullet hole on the destroyed model. HMH Chrysler K fixed tracks clipping into the wheels. 
HMH Chrysler K camo no longer applied to viewports. The Chrysler K correct gun sound is now used. Now I hate that because they still haven't done the VK 101P, where that tank should sound a lot louder when firing a 128, but it still sounds like it's using a sniper barrel. The Aussie inscriptions no longer clip into the bars on the side of the tank. The Tog 2 gun no longer clips into the exhaust pipes and fix the size of the tread decals. The T25E6 barrel no longer clips into objects on the tank and sniper view. Right side threads no longer clip into the upper wheels. The Panzer 1C barrel no longer visible in sniper view because that thing has a small barrel to begin with, so not seeing what the point of that was. The HMH T3485M got a couple, had missing textures inside the barrel, wiggly bits and sandbags are now removed when destroyed, camouflage is now behind in the star of the hull 360. Um, got it added missing start on the hull. Spare threads no longer accumulate environmental effects. The King Dragon Type 59 fixed seam and barrel when destroyed. The Champion Sherman M4 destroyed threads now have correct texture. The Alpine Tiger has a fire FX now correctly placed as well as machine gun now wiggly bits wiggles correctly. Uh, the Hellcat machine gun now wiggles correctly. The WZ 111 G FT. I think that's the tier 9. Fixed destroyed wheel texture camo is no longer applied to the headlights. The WZ111 1GFT is the non-premium version of the Aussie. Wheels no longer clips through the tracks as well as fixed tr size of track when destroyed. Matilda 4. Fixed camo scale on barrel. Um, the Panzer 7 now has a flag attachment. The WZ111 camo is no longer applied to the exhaust vent. The FV2015 A45 Black Edition 360 fixed visual issues with the suspension. Some max maps have been changed around, so Icebound Encounter Base Circle is now fully visible. That was always an issue issue on ice maps to begin with the line is still white so it's kind of hard to detect when you're actually in the base uh, province fixed a number of floating objects around the map lakeville collision now correctly matches visual of building in e8 Numenhan winter fixed flickering between snow and a rocket g3 g4 fixed floating destroyed state of dry roots adjusted terrain at d1 to prevent players from getting stuck blocked off access to unintended areas on K6 and K9 and trees now correctly fall when knocked over. Rezani clouds added to SBG strategic cam. Severgorsk fix the water level in the creek bed. Severgorsk red splotches in snow removed from A0. Malinovka winter boat frozen in lake at D3 and J8 no longer moves and border line added to a one i assume that's because of the frozen part of that live oaks fixed floating bush at d1 berlin winter collision new now correctly matches visual of building at d9 and remove duplicate buildings at d9 that's interesting i didn't notice that one pilsen fixed flickering with a concrete slab i think i believe i noticed this before but not not to the point where i was paying attention to it rather than i was paying attention to the tank in front of me ah people man you notice some of the slightest details uh abbey collision of building adjusted at e4 to prevent entering it and abbey fixed floating rock at e3 arctic region block unintended areas at k8 and can someone tell me what that blocked region was so i can figure out if i can find a video of it so those were all the bugs and fixes that was introduced in the update spoils of war summary. Um, a little bit shorter than the last one. Again, I don't really have anyone to go back and forth with as well as um, there was not really a lot of tank changes as there were previously. Um, as I believe the last one had a couple of tank adjustments stated and a lot more stuff to go over. However, again, the new features, the war stories, the base capture, redesign, uh, com common crew portraits and defense tower. I've already talked about them in topics previously in previous videos, so I'd hate to bring them back up again. Overall, I'd say that the biggest thing I enjoy for this update is definitely the adjusted battle tiers that was introduced for newer players. Now, keep in mind, this does not prevent any of the more experienced players from just taking their lower tier tanks and going down into those lower tiers and just having fun with them but it does help with players being more progressively introduced to newer things than being just given a bunch of maps straight out the gate 
as mines is pretty much straight out the gate the most popular map across all battle tiers um it'll at least progressively the higher you go the more tanks you gain uh in the levels the the more experience that you can become with those specific maps instead of having to uh pretty much just figure out how to play on each different map now that that's a great improvement for this however i feel like because of this update those battle tier adjustments um it'll pretty much mean that the maps that those players see in the lower tiers become a little bit kind of like what the general consensus is is that we don't see enough map variation for all the higher tiers um it's basically the same maps over and over and we'd love more variety in it um now it is great for newer players however for the veteran players i'm not sure how this will go over uh i know that they have said that one of the biggest concerns for um pretty much people right now or not concerns but um the one thing that demanded at this point is a fix to the matchmaking in general now this is basically to help the newer players get adjusted to it and jeff greg in their previous live stream has pretty much stated that in their next update that they plan to do um they plan on going over and i believe this is in may again don't quote me on it but that's just what i remember them talking about in may they plan on introducing um a form of uh I guess similar to what PC has their um, their three five seven um, matchmaking, which I, f I forgot exactly what they call it, um, but their scaled matchmaking uh, or template matchmaking system it is not something that we can definitely take and put into console because of the sheer number of players that we actually have playing at certain times on console but there is a um a patch coming for that later on that they're going to be looking into that they have tried on console and has had better feedback than what pc has now if that is the same uh, template system that they have well great we'll be able to have a little bit better matches and it'll be great to be introduced along with this um template system that they currently have for the battle tiers for lower uh for newer players and i'm I'm glad to see this coming right now um i'm definitely interested in being able to play the king dragon type 59 this is probably one of my more uh more anticipated things from this update along with that battle tier system being introduced uh but overall not really that much as far as tanks being updated um other than visually besides the king dragon uh as well as the maps being fixed these are all uh, visual aspects of the tanks um as well as some of the bugs that te tem you know they tend to pop up during updates regardless and players are always on the lookout for them in general so it's always something if you spot a bug just head on over to the forums and give your feedback to the dev so that they can address it as quickly as possible and sometimes you get credit for that if it's a big enough um bug so update 4.4 Expose of war summary that's it for me guys i hope it was helpful if you guys paid attention to it i hope you guys have enjoyed the type 59 um if you did if you've gotten a chance to play with the 104 with the brand new 105 on it let me know your thoughts on it uh again i will be doing a update video for that or revision for the king dragon type 59 and more on that probably in the next week or so um as soon as i get a chance to be able to lay out some videos for or some gameplay of that tank so Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully it was helpful for you. If you did, please leave a like down below. If you didn't, leave a dislike. It always helps regardless as long as you're giving me some feedback. And just give me uh, your overall thoughts on what the summary had to state. Again, some of the other features we've talked about previously. That's always uh, in the other videos. You can always leave comments on those. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Have a good night.